Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Celia Copper. I am a project officer for the computer science education research team at the University of Melbourne. And today's session is a collaboration with the wonderful Melanie Hughes, the curriculum specialist at um, ACARA. This is a very uh, brief snapshot um, that will provide you with heaps of ideas and lots of links to look at further after this brief introduction. The webinar is part of a series celebrating the launch of our uh, computer science education research courses. I'll call that CESAR from now on for educators. We'd like to thank Google Australia for funding our course updates and this webinar series. CESAR has been running online professional learning in the STEM space since 2014. Uh, webinars are a great place for bringing people together from a wide variety of places. So please tell us in the chat where you are coming from today, whilst uh, we introduce, uh, we, we acknowledge the country that we're coming from. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the Ghana people, the custod traditional custodians of the ancestral lands the University of Adelaide is situated on. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to the country, and we respect the value and value their past, present and ongoing connections to the land and cultural beliefs. I work in Victoria and I'm coming to you today from the land of the Bunurong people in South Gippsland. Today's session is uh, very short, as I said, just 30 minutes. And the first session section will be where Melanie uh, will help uh, highlight some of the digital technologies changes in the new curriculum. And then I will go ahead and explain how our upcoming cybersecurity courses help, will, will help you unpack those. So over to Melanie for her first introduction. Thank you, Celia. And uh, I would like to acknowledge that I am presenting to you today from the land of the Gay Magal people. I'm privileged to live and work on their country and uh, I pay my respects to elders past and present. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background to version nine of the Australian curriculum and uh, a little bit of background that will help situate understanding cybersecurity and how that looks in version nine of the Australian curriculum technologies and in digital literacy. So on the next slide, I've got um, a little bit of an overview, if I can ask Cecilia to move that on, wonderful, of some of the key changes that have happened from version 8.4 to version nine. Now, this is not all of the key changes, but I've picked out a few that I think are really helpful to consider when we're thinking about uh, cybersecurity. And if you're interested in knowing more fully what some of those changes are, there are a few places on the version nine uh, website where you can find out more information and they include the, uh, the downloads section of the website where we have a comparative document that shows the changes from one version to the other and the professional learning hub uh, where we have a series of videos and resources that take you through the key changes um, in much more detail. But just to highlight some of these that are really helpful to consider, uh, one of the things that's happened in version 9 is uh, we have uh, strengthened the links to digital literacy across all the learning areas. So in version 8.4, where we, this was described as the ICT general capability, it's now called the digital literacy general capability. And in the same way that we think about literacy as having a home in English and numeracy as having a home in uh, mathematics, we think about digital literacy as having a home in di the digital technologies curriculum. Of course, digital literacy uh, belongs to all learning areas and students build um, knowledge and skill and capability uh, in digital literacies in all learning areas. But that's a really important thing to know. We'll talk more about the, the uh, changes to the digital literacy general capability on uh, the coming slides. Another really key point is that we have gone to considerable trouble to ensure that there's consistent and clear language. And that includes new language and terms that are particular to digital literacy and technologies. And some of the ones that are really relevant to us talking about the conversation of cybersecurity include the three that you can see on the left-hand side of the slide. Uh, they include online safety, 
which is the behaviour that we have as individuals um, in terms of how we protect ourselves and how we protect others and what are the effects of our practices and our behaviours on our own health and well-being and that of other people as well. We have privacy, which is all around the idea of how we control information and data and, uh, and how we handle that data. And then the last one, security, which is related to our, mostly related to our topic today, is the idea of protecting data and how we make sure that we keep um, risk at a uh, minimum and how we think about the way that uh, digital systems transmit data and how data is encrypted to keep it safe and secure. Uh, and just on that note, one of the, th the important things to think about when we're thinking about the language and terms that are used in the cybersecurity space it, um, and how that relates to what's in the curriculum, in years seven and eight and nine and ten, you'll see the words cybersecurity. In the years below year seven, you'll see just the word security. But we are talking about the same thing. We're talking about protecting data and just making um, that understanding a little bit more sophisticated and detailed as we progress through the, the different year levels. Another change that's happened from version 8.4 to version 9 is that we have a new privacy and security substrand in digital technologies, and we also have a new core concept of privacy and security that fits very much with our contemporary world. And then finally, um, some of the content descriptions have been split in half, and that's just, again, to provide a bit more clarity about what's going on. In version 8.4, in some of the content descriptions, we had two things happening in the content description. Uh, the students might do one thing and another thing, often joined by the word and. So in version nine, uh, some of those content descriptions have been uh, split in two so that those two things are represented individually. So same, same amount of content, but just uh, two content descriptions. And the one that's on the screen there looks very much at uh, a year five and six collaborating and managing example, where one of the content descriptions refers to creating, um, locating and communicating. And the second one is about sharing content online. And you can see when we're thinking about concepts related to privacy and security, um, why it might be important that we differentiate those two things. Um, in the younger years, I mentioned that we describe security rather than cybersecurity. And it's important to make a note that when we're talking about cybersecurity, we are really focusing on the security rather than the privacy. But in those younger years, we often talk about both things um, at the same time because they do have a relationship, but they are different and it's important that we note that. So let's have a look at the next slide, which is a representation of the sequence of content uh, that shows you the, the new privacy and security content, the 11 new content descriptions from F to 10. So we can see the sorts of things that students might begin to learn in the foundation year and how that develops in complexity and sophistication as they move through to years 9 and 10. So for security, obviously in foundation, we're not requiring students to be able to do anything particularly but when we get them into years one and two, we want them to be thinking about some of the day-to-day -day things that, uh, that have to do with keeping yourself safe online and keeping data safe online. So in years one and two, the expectation is that students will start to uh, talk about and be aware that they need to have a username and password. And at that level, at that very um, junior level, it's more than acceptable that they record a username and password on a card or a piece of paper or, or some system that the teacher has in class because they're starting to you know, learn how to remember their password. Obviously, as they move up to years three and four, we want them to memorise a password and think about how they can create a password that's easy to remember but hard for other people to guess. And as you can see, as they move through to years five and six, we start to think about creating unique passphrases and getting students to think very carefully about the risks of reusing passwords and, and some of the other risks that are associated. 
And then right through to year 10, where we start getting into the more sophisticated idea around cyber safety, uh, sorry, cyber security, uh, that include things like um, modeling uh, and exploring supply chain vulnerability. If we move down to the privacy content descriptions, uh, and again, because we're focusing today on cybersecurity, I'll just speak briefly about these, but by comparison in the foundation year, we just want to introduce students to the idea that they have some data and that, that it is personal to them. And then we want students in the years from one and two to years nine and 10 to be, again, looking at the idea of how they're creating content and how that's being stored and shared online and controlled uh, in a way that will help them understand what it means uh, for their, their digital footprint and what they leave behind and how their data can be traced and tracked and used for other purposes. Thank you, Celia. So the next slide is a little bit of an idea of the relationship of digital literacy to digital technologies and security, privacy and security. I'll talk about both of those things. On the left of the slide, we have uh, the ICT general capability, which was five elements and 14 sub-elements. In version nine, represented on the right of the slide, we have now four elements and 12 sub-elements. So that's been simplified and reduced and rewritten so that the, um, the content that students will be coming into contact with through the different learning areas that are described in these elements and sub-elements are a little bit clearer. So if you click again for me, thank you, you'll, you'll see that the practicing digital safety and well-being really helps us see uh, the, the way that students might be uh, practicing as part of that digital literacy capability, being safe online and understanding privacy in all learning areas and also managing their digital identity. In the managing and operating element and in the protect and protect content substrand, that's really where we're applying some of these security concepts and ideas that, that speak to cybersecurity. Thank you very much. See you there. So let's consider what that means for the considerations for assessment. On the on the left hand side of the slide. I have here a little bit of a representation of the way that the achievement standards talk about what it is that students need to be able to demonstrate in terms of their knowledge and skill. The foundation year talks about um, from a cybersecurity or, or security perspective, um, not much because as, as you saw represented in those new content descriptions, security isn't something that's a priority in the foundation years. Midway through years five and six, we talk about securely accessing data and using multiple digital systems and describing how the processes work in terms of transmitting data and also for that privacy aspect, how they, how they protect their digital footprint and recognise that the, the decisions they make are permanent. In years nine and ten, the way that that's represented in the achievement standard is that students explain how digital systems manage, control and secure access to data and model cybersecurity threats and explore vulnerabilities. And in terms of the privacy, we, we want them to be thinking again at a very high level, thinking about how to apply privacy principles to manage digital footprints. So the important thing to note on the right of the slide is that we want students to be able to have the opportunity to, uh, in, in multiple ways, to come into contact with developing their cybersecurity skills or their security skills, depending what year level they're, they're working at, and to be, to be able to apply them in context. And that's really important because we know that not all content descriptions um, have an equivalent value or should have the same amount of time spent on them. Some of them can be revisited multiple times and should be revisited multiple times so that students have an opportunity to build their skill and understanding. And we know that teachers need to make those decisions about um, what's going to work best for the students in their context. And also 
think about ways that they can integrate content across the two strands of technology subjects and how they can integrate that into other learning areas. So the final slide is uh, just to point out to you, you'll find uh, more opportunities that Celia is going to describe about how you can learn about more resources, but in terms of what ACARA can offer to give you an opportunity to think about how to apply um, your, your professional learning and, and how you can use some of the content that we've described and talked about there uh, in your teaching. We have resources uh, in our curriculum connections section, one of them on artificial intelligence and another one on online safety, and both of those talk about the relationship of security and privacy uh, and the way that students learn about that in various learning areas and give you some context about how that's specific to those particular uh, big ideas or concepts. And we also have a range of work samples that show examples of how students may have demonstrated what, what's represented in the achievement standard. And the one I have on the screen there is a year uh, six example where a student through a short video explains the process of logging on securely to the school network and explains why that's important and the steps involved in doing that. So those two things are really key and crucial in, in terms of uh, understanding how those resources we have can support you. The other thing to say is in regard to artificial intelligence, uh, our security, our privacy and security uh, knowledge and understanding is a really key part of understanding that. And for those of you who have read or seen or are working with the Australian um, Generative Artificial Intelligence Framework for Schools, you'll notice that privacy, security and safety is one of the six principles uh, that that framework talks about because when we are talking about security and privacy, obviously data and the digital systems we're using is a big part of that conversation. So I might end there and pass back to Celia. Thanks, Melanie. You did an amazing job of summarising a lot of detail in a very short amount of time. So thank you for that. We put you under the pump to try and do that, and do that in such a short amount of time. So the last part of the session will be um, us showing you some of the resources that we have available on our um, CESAR website, some of our online courses. Many of you are probably already aware that we have had um, digital technologies, um, professional learning opportunities on our um, site for many years. Um, and we are pleased to announce that the, the um, original digital technologies curriculum uh, support courses have now been updated and are, are available now. Um, so we have the Decoding Digital Technologies um, course, uh, which covers the, uh, the general um, uh, curriculum details. And we also have a Digital Technologies Plus X course, which uh, allows you to look at how digital technologies can be blended in other subject areas. In particular, we focus on maths, literacy and sustainability unit. Uh, the cybersecurity courses that I'm talking about today are due to be published very soon. Um, and we recommend that you uh, subscribe to our newsletter and you'll be one of the first to find out when they're actually live. So today's a bit of a sneak peek of some of the features that are there. So our cybersecurity courses, we will have um, one for primary and one for secondary teachers. And the broad scope, broad um, subject areas include those on the screen. <clears throat> In our courses, we uh, make sure, <clears throat> sorry, we summarise key content, um, we provide definitions in the form of either um, text or images, and we suggest possible ways that the ideas can be in implemented in a classroom. The cross-curriculum possibility and the links to digital literacy general capability are also clearly identified. Uh, we acknowledge and support the amazing resources that already exist. We don't reinvent wheels that have already been um, invented. So the amazing work um, in this space that the Digital Technologies Hub, for example, have already highlighted, the eSafety Commissioner, Common Sense Education, Hello Ruby and a variety of other people are all used in our, um, in our materials. So the primary course will have these five um, units available and the secondary course will have similar but obviously slightly more sophisticated units. We will be recommending that the um, even secondary teachers should perhaps um, engage with our primary course uh, because secondary teachers will get the value from registering 
for both um, because they, the content can be adjusted to higher levels. And as these are new concepts, students in years seven and eight may not have been taught the foundational knowledge in the primary years just yet. So the content in both primary and secondary will be relevant. Also, as having said that, teachers of primary can also get an idea as to where the secondary um, where the curriculum will be heading for their students. So to see what's available in the secondary course is not a bad idea. I did, didn't mention yet, but all our courses will be, uh, will, these will be free available to teachers in Australia. <clears throat> so the next few slides are just some uh, snippets of some of the sort of material you'll see within our course. So this is a, a section where we unpack the three key ideas, look at cyber security, cyber safety and cyber awareness. Some of the, these ideas, as Melanie was mentioning, are used interchangeably, referring to the same idea. But each also has their own specific focus and throughout the courses we cover each element. So as I said, these, um, some of these are just uh, screenshots of what the course will look like. Uh, <clears throat> data is the, new, is the key element in digital technologies and needs to be protected. Exporting vulnerabilities in hardware or software or taking advantage of the people using technology is the aim of cyber threats and attacks. And through the online courses, these concepts are explored and we identify resources and activities suitable for the classroom. For example, um, this is an, a, a suggest, a, um, an example from our primary course, a data sorting activity. We're aware there are a variety of other activities similar to this one. Um, this is our version and we have our um, infographics. These are all downloadable from the course and available to be used straight, um, straight away by teachers. I am going fast because I've now only got eight minutes to go. Uh, another example here um, would be a uh, for the primary class, we have suggested a um, an activity that we've actually adapted from one of Hello Ruby's activities. It's called a data selfie, that we're now calling a digi our digital habits activity. And within the course, we've got an example. We've got a template ready for you to, you, to, to download and use as well. <clears throat> this one looks at where students uh, there's an activity where the students list elements of their recent browsing history and analyze how that history can be used to determine future recommended sites and advertisements. Students can explore how the search engine algorithms tailor suggestions for things like advertisements and video games and using your past um, viewing history, they will um, recommend the, uh, future sites. So we talk about the idea of a filter bubble or echo chambers within um, data usage. As I said, we um, highlight activities that already exist. So in this case, when we are looking in the digital in the secondary course, uh, and we're looking at digital systems and data, and we suggest that you look at the um, a Morse code activity that um, using microbits that the Digital Technologies Hub has on site. In our secondary course, um, no, sorry, in the primary course. Um, we explore the fundamentals of cybersecurity and cyber safety, um, which we expand on further in the secondary course, uh, where we delve into the levels of security and use uh, an international airport as an, as an analogy um, for teaching these concepts. As I said, these are just snip, snapshots of what, what you will find within the course. Cybersecurity threats are discussed. Um, in, this, um, in the primary course, we explore cyber threats and explore useful security measures to protect ourselves and others from cyber security threats, including learning about past phrases and being able to identify online scams. With the digital literacy capability, it's expected that secondary students independently apply strategies to ensure the security and, and integrity of the data is upheld. They manage their digital identity by controlling privacy, connections and group settings and creating posts. We've um, created a number of uh, infographics that are available um, for you to download through the course. We highlight infographics because also they're a great way of um, presenting information, but also we think they're a fantastic tool to get students to create because they um, require a lot of synthesizing of deep information in order to be able to create them down to something simplistic that the infographic requires. <clears throat> so these are just some examples of our infographics on the in the courses. Almost at the last few now. Um, so we in the secondary course we have an example here 
uh, of um, a infographic that's created that could be used by students to assess and analyze the, the veracity of websites they use. And there is a lesson plan based around that. We uh, also <clears throat> discussed the, the concept of ethics um, in the cyber world. Um, and we've used this example here, which is from uh, based on a uh, thinking thinking hotspots activity from the physical thinking routine, uh, where student the cards are prepared in, uh, presented in the course um, for you to uh, facilitate a conversation with students, asking them to place certain scenarios along this scale of, of where they think um, it might fit. So we but actually said, even though we have actually provided suggested scenarios, ethical scenarios in the cyber world, we'd actually suggest that you, the students come up with their own. And then they use this um, thinking routine in order to have a discussion about where, where it fits. Is, does it feel right or wrong? What's the impact on others? So that would be one of the activities in our um, ethical cyber ethics section. In all our courses, we also try and connect to the real world. And so we have examples in um, the secondary course in particular um, about different careers that and different industries where um, careers in cybersecurity are becoming more and more prevalent. And I think my time is just about up. Yep, perfect timing. Um, so just a reminder, but that was a very quick run through. Um, just a reminder that our courses are all available through our online, course, online site. And if you were to click on the uh, subscribe to program updates, you will receive our newsletter and that will make you aware when these cybersecurity courses are actually live and ready to go. So thank you for joining us and thank you, Melanie, so much for joining us today um, for that very quick snapshot of the, um, the curriculum summary, summary as well as our online course material. I'm going to ask you to stop the recording now, Tony. And then if anyone has any questions or answers questions, we can be happy to take them.